what you're currently looking at is my hockey skate, and it's hanging from a boom arm via a strand of fishing line. A roll of fishing line like this is useful for catching fish, but also very useful for filmmaking. It's a common tool used for rigging up more complex shots. Oftentimes, we are able to hide a piece of fishing line in a shot without it being visible on camera, no editing required, but other times you can't always hide it and you will see it in a shot. Like in this shot from my hockey skate mock commercial, which you might have seen me create in my last video. If we were to not remove the fishing line in that shot and we just left it in the final edit, it kind of ruins the overall magic of the video, having the skate just floating there with the smoke all around it. Removing that fishing line in post is crucial to the overall effect. As many of you know, I edit all of my videos in Final Cut Pro, and unfortunately, unlike After Effects, Final Cut Pro doesn't have a built-in wire removal tool. But don't be discouraged because Final Cut actually does have everything we need to accomplish a pretty similar result. Now before I go ahead and show you exactly how I remove the fishing line from this shot, I should warn you that every video is going to be different. Depending on your footage, the lighting, the angles, even the camera settings, everything is going to be a factor in how you go about removing that fishing line. So just remember, this isn't necessarily a one size fits all solution, rather take the tools and the tricks that you learn in this tutorial and then apply it to your own footage in a way that makes sense for that footage. So here's our shot of the skate and let's take a look at what we've done to it so far. As you can see, I added a sort of preliminary base color grade just so we can work with something a little closer to our final result. But more importantly, I've already gone ahead and made all of my keyframes on the movement of the shot in the transforms. I've also added stabilization and I have already speed ramped the clip to the speed and duration it is going to be in the final edit. This is a super important step because if you remove your wires first and then you do all of this stuff, you run the risk of messing messing up the wire removal and changing the pacing or the timing of some of the keyframes you might have made. So always make sure that you edit the pacing of your video first, ignoring the wires. And then once you're satisfied with the pacing and the speed ramps or whatever movements you have added to your footage, then you can go in, remove the wires before you do your final touches like adding lightning bolts to the footage or your final color grading pass. Now, in our case, to remove this fishing line right here, we're going to have to remove it in two parts. Part one is removing this portion of the wire above the skate, which is fairly straightforward because it's just on a black background with some smoke. And then part two is removing the wire from the rest of the skate, which is a little bit trickier. Now, to remove the part of the wire that is above the skate, we will start by making this a compound clip. This will ensure that we don't accidentally change anything that we've already done to the clip. And once we make our compound clip, we will We'll duplicate it by holding down the option key on our keyboard and dragging up. I'll start by scrubbing through our clip until we find a good reference frame somewhere near the middle where we can see the whole skate. This looks good, so I'll click M on my keyboard to set a marker so that we know that this exact frame is our reference and the starting point for removing the wire. We're going to select our bottom clip and disable it by clicking V and then going back to our top clip, we're going to want to create a mask around the wire. So in our effects window, we'll grab the draw mask tool, drag it onto the top clip, zoom in a whole bunch here, and then we will simply draw four points around those two visible wires just like so. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and invert our mask and this removes the wires from our shot. Now, obviously we're left with this black space here. So from here, we can re-enable the bottom clip once again by clicking the V key. And in our effects window, we will find the Gaussian blur and we want to add that to our bottom clip. And in our Gaussian blur window, we'll turn the vertical blur down all the way to zero. And I'm going to ever so slightly decrease the overall blur amount to about 44. To blend this mask a little bit better, I'll open the color board by hitting Command-6 on the keyboard, and in the Exposure tab, I'll bring down the highlights a bit, and then just subtly bump up the midtones and the shadows. Now going back to our top clip for a second here, I definitely want to feather the mask to smooth it out as much as we can without the wires becoming visible, and that to me looks pretty well blended, and I can't see the wires at all. Obviously, we haven't yet removed the portion of the wire that is actually on the skate, but as for the wire above the skate, to my eye, it's totally gone. 
Now our shot of course does have a bit of movement so all we need to do is set keyframes on both the transforms as well as the control points of the mask and then I'm going to go to the end and adjust the position of the mask making sure that those wires are still covered and basically here I'm just going through the whole clip and whenever you see the mask deviate from where the wires are we just reposition the mask or the control points until the wires are hidden throughout the whole clip. While this part is a little bit tedious, it actually gets a lot easier the more you've done stuff like this. And you absolutely don't have to reposition the mask on every single frame. The best thing to do is start in the middle, then do the beginning and the end, and like I said, scrub through, and whenever that mask kind of deviates from where it needs to be, you can just nudge it over. This process really only takes a couple of minutes, but once you're done, you'll get something that looks like this. Now, believe it or not, in the actual final video that I put out on YouTube and Instagram, I didn't bother removing the fishing wire from the skate itself. I just removed that top portion and I was fine with it. Because here's the thing, realistically, I should have rigged the skate in a way where that fishing wire wasn't overlapping on top of it. I should have tied it to the lace or something or somewhere in the back where you wouldn't see it in front of the skate. That was kind of dumb on my part. And my advice to you is that when you're rigging things like this, you leave the wires behind the product because removing it from in front of a product is a little extra tedious. But even still, when you're watching this video with all of the final lightning bolt effects and the color grade, and you're watching on a mobile screen, Really nobody is going to notice that thin little wire on the skate unless you point it out to them. Most people watching the video haven't even seen the behind the scenes, so they don't know that the skate was hanging by a fishing wire, so they're less likely to notice it. But yes, if you look closely enough, you can definitely still see the wire, so if you really want to remove it still, here is how. We'll once again make this a compound clip to ensure that we don't mess up anything we just did, and then we can duplicate our compound clip and put it on top. The process is pretty much the exact same as it was for the other portion of the wire, only this time we'll have to use some slightly different settings because the two portions of the wire are on totally different backgrounds. Go ahead and disable the bottom clip with the V key so that we can see what we're doing, zoom in a whole bunch, and we'll go ahead with our draw mask tool once again, making sure we put that on the top clip and we'll select the area around the visible wire. Now you'll notice that I'm not drawing the mask all that close to our wire and there is a reason for this. Our logic might lead us to believe that we'll get a less noticeable result if we draw that mask as close to the wire as possible. But that's actually not the case because we need to make sure that we leave enough room to feather our mask in so that it blends all together. If we draw that mask too close, we won't have room to feather and then we will have a noticeable line where the fishing line used to be. Once again, don't forget to invert the mask and then mark our reference frame on the timeline with the M key. Mask is drawn, so we'll re-enable our bottom clip and add the Gaussian blur effect. Again, turning the vertical blur down all the way to zero and the overall blur all the way down to somewhere between four and 5%. That looks pretty good. Back on our top clip, we're now gonna feather our mask a little bit. I'm going to feather inward toward the wire. About negative six looks to be pretty good. And you can see that adding the blur has effectively softened up that wire, but it's definitely still there. To blend this further, we will add our color board again, command six on the keyboard. And in the exposure tab, we will play around with these values until it looks nicely blended. This for me right here is as good as it's going to get by this method without using any other apps. I did do another version with Photoshop Generative Fill, which worked flawlessly, but if we're doing it all in Final Cut, I do think that this is the best we're going to get. Once we zoom back out, nobody is ever going to notice that in the final video, so we'll go ahead and keyframe the mask with the control points and the transforms, just like we did earlier for the other portion of the wire. Once our keyframes are done, we can once again zoom out and take a look at our final results. Here is the shot before we did any wire removal. Here's the shot again, but with the wire removed. And here is of course the final shot without the wire and all of our added effects. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, click like, click subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow me on threads, and I will see you in the next video.